Okay. Are you good? Okay. Hi, Dad. Hey. Hi. I am so excited to have you. I just want to introduce you. You guys, I am so happy today. This is my friend, Dab, and he takes the most incredible and amazing images. He has contact with multi-terrestrial beings and he's capturing sentience in the sky when he takes these photographs and I just had to plus he's an amazing astrologer as well and so oh. you know I was excited um I was just want to explore your work Brad if that's okay and maybe sure. if I can just turn the reins over to you and you can show us what you've been working on for the awesome. last at least couple years I feel like you and I have loosely known yeah. each other and been acquaintances oh yeah, yeah. absolutely it's amazing um when i first met you you introduced me a lot to the galactic side of the astrology and that that piqued my interest a lot and it actually makes a lot of sense what you kind of did the reading for me connected a lot of dots and uh since then man i've been having well i've been having some crazier experiences but um the experiences have just been ramping up even more now that we're getting to this new timeline on this new earth that we are all heading to yeah. so this is very very exciting well this is thank something... you you were one of my first um clients that i did and so that was really exciting that was an honor and i appreciate it oh i appreciate you it was amazing oh, thank <laughs> it you. was amazing reading amazing yeah. reading it got thank me you. my peak my interest for me to get into glass astrology that's how good it was I so, love it. <laughs> when you brought up big stars, when you were on Robert's show, I was just doing cartwheels. I was so excited. It was awesome. It's so oh, that's awesome. Good. That's um, awesome. Okay, maybe I'll just turn the reins over to you. And if you want, you can kind of show us what you've got. Okay, sure. Okay. So, thank um, you. so basically, starting, I was uh, here. Starting, I was. My journey started spiritually about a couple of years ago. Um, I was, I was pretty much a religious a Christian kid. I believe in God and, and everything. And, um, I was always told, um, by my mother that I would always have some kind of impact in the world. Um, a psychic told my mother this when I was a kid and, uh, I always had this ability to, like to kind of discern and read people, but I didn't know that that was my gift. Um, that's part of my gift is that, and, uh, you kind of actually helped me realize that uh with one of your readings um finding out that my one of my gifts is that because of and then the fact that i'm super empathic because my degrees are at zero degrees i mean it's literally i feel everything <laughs> so i learned um doing this that i was really sensitive to energies and i started seeing things um around 2019 2020 i think was when the veil started getting lifted for me and when i when it got lifted it was like an energetic shield um, that comes off and it's like the first layer. And what I mean, first layer is there's steps and self mastery for every category that we have in our life that we do energetically, um, seeing, teaching, transmuting, whatever it may be. There's a, like a, it's like a video game level mastery. Um, so they took off that first level for me and I noticed things in the sky and I would always uh, pray for discernment and all these other things, not knowing I already had these things. And the people around me weren't seeing it. And I was, <laughs> I was labeled as the crazy alien guy and uh, seeing different things in the clouds. I would see eyeballs. And um, I was astonished that when I would see these things, um, my friends that were standing right next to me, I'm pointing at the things, they couldn't see it. And I didn't understand at that time that that's why they couldn't see it because their veil wasn't lifted for them. So they're just seeing regularly clouds. And even in the pictures after I take them, uh, they were still just seeing clouds. And that was an interesting aspect because dealing with that and then coming to your own realization spiritually that like, hey, you're seeing something, it didn't verify it to me. Until one day, these beings came down into the physical reality. and. <laughs> and met me in person and that was kind of wild like as orbs and talking to them and uh that changed my whole perspective of um everything 
because I, I at first you know I I saw UFOs. We all were looking to see UFOs on YouTube, and I never seen one in person until this time. And then when they physically came down, um, as like light orbs on the ground level, it's like fifteen of them. Uh, this is yeah. really awesome. I'm like, so yeah. sorry for interrupting you, but I can feel <laughs> that. Yes. The oh, excitement, dude. that exhilarating. Like a lion being, a lion being, a bunch of different beings. I think my grandmother. It was like a bunch of people like that, that was down. There was like fifteen of them, wow. and they all lined up in on the field. And I have a video of this, um, on my page somewhere. I have to find it. But and uh, it was nuts. It was it was strobing lights, and when I would talk to them, it was telepathic. So like the lights would strobe, and I can hear what they're saying. So it would be like, "Hello, Brad." Or it would be like, how are you? It would be like that. And I'm like, I'm sitting there. I thought I was tripping. And I was talking to him for an hour about how the world needs to change. And, you know, if I had the power to change it, I would. And they were like uh, telling me that he would be assisting me. Uh, and my mission on here, my mission is just, get, just getting started. And um, part of it is to show people that they exist and that they're here with us, assisting us. And they're not just in the clouds, but they're in everything. Uh, everything that you can perceive in this reality, they're in. They're in, they're on our skin. They're in the trees. They're on the grass. Um, they're in everything. So, so um, can I just time out for just a moment and mm -hmm. ask you a couple of questions, or would you like mm -hmm. to continue sure. on? Sure. And then, okay. Wow, because that's just so much there that you just unpacked. So. Back to the orbs. Oh, first of all, let's go back to when you were seeing things in the sky and your friends were, I'm looking at you here. I so if oh, okay. I'm looking down, <laughs> it's because I can see your face here. Okay. So, um, on my computer. I got you. Yeah, same. I'm, yeah, so, I'm not I'm looking, looking away. down. I see your face here too. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, that must have been just wild. Like just, I can understand. Um, I just want to stay there for just a second because i feel like that may be um a hindrance if you will for those maybe non-believers is not to um we're trained not to feel into what an experience looks like yes programs and, yeah we're extremely programmed. extremely programmed like Completely. um pop culture does that a lot for us and programs us for us to see like we expect an experience with these with these beings and, and a contact mm -hmm. to be a certain way like the movies and and like little green men and all this but you got to understand some of these beings that are here are 12th density ninth density high density beings they don't even have a literally a physical body in their conscious so they're literally energy plasma light um and they can they're multi-dimensional, meaning they can be, they don't, the meta-terrestrial beings, meaning they don't, have, they don't go on the laws of physics, time, or space. They can appear in multiple dimensions at once, and they can appear anywhere, anywhere and anywhere at, at the same time. So when they appear in front of you, it's like they're going, it's like they can be, their time doesn't exist for them. So they can basically watch you in the past, present, and future all at the same time, if you put it in that perspective. <laughs> so when you refer to multi-terrestrial, it you're using it the same as multi-dimensional, is that correct? Uh, meta-terrestrial. Or meta, I'm sorry, meta-terrestrial. Yeah, meta-terrestrial. So okay, uh, so, okay so extraterrestrial, um, in my perspective, are beings that exist on so it's Terra. Um, it's uh, it's beings that from other lands of Terra in this realm. So okay. in a sense, like the other realms that's here on, on this planet, um, those beings would be extraterrestrial because Terra being Earth and extra lands, extra, so extraterrestrials, people from other lands. But meta terrestrial beings are beings that don't don't necessarily need the constructs of this realm and this dimension. They literally exist in multiple dimensions and they can be in multiple places at the same time. They could be in the past, present, or future. Um, it, time doesn't exist for them and they, so they can see all outcomes, um, of everything all at once. And that's how I think they're able to place yourself in your timeline, uh, for you to see them and interact with them because they know what you're going to do and where you're going to be at, at the right time to kind of get that synchronicity to see them. 
Would you say that like angelics or blue printers and the absolutely like uh yeah like high councils these mm -hmm. these would be the meta terrestrial that they yes. don't have um they're not down in the like fifth well I don't know I kind of perceive like density as beginning to manifest in like the sixth and fifth um dimension. What are mm -hmm. your thoughts on that? Um, so fourth dimension, the earth right now is in fourth density mm -hmm. um, consciousness of the whole earth. We're, we're right now in the middle of fourth density. So everybody collectively is seeing when you cross into fourth, it begins to find out more neutrality. You start seeing the ET realm and the spirit realm mm -hmm. merge together. So spirits and ETs mm -hmm. are in the same realm. So they kind of look like apparitions in a sense for some people, orbs, um, that's in that realm. And then our bodies are actually meant to go up into 12D. A lot of us uh, are, since we are spiritual batteries and ascended masters ourselves, we can rise up in dimensions and densities and, and go down in, in dimensions and densities at will. We do, that every, we do it all the time. A lot of us exist in a higher than fifth and sixth density just living. <laughs> we but we don't know it we don't know that we're actually there right. and then we we lower ourselves and our consciousness back down to the to the state that we're in but a lot of us are existing in that and i think i feel that we can exist up to 12th density consciousness um and this physicality before we become energy ourselves and in a light body and then we once you get past the 12th density you would go to the original flames of the universe and that's what it goes to the indigo and the uh, emerald flame and uh, then 15th density is source or, or God. And um, and once you get there, that's where all these beings are, are doing. They're all working together to get to this back to the creator. Um, and uh, they all are helping us because they need us to kind of ascend so they can ascend. Um, it's kind of like a helping chain type of deal. And uh, but a lot of these beings that we're seeing are angelic or them. Um, multi-dimensional beings i've seen lyrans felines i've seen syrian beings andromedans um palladians like the palladians look exactly like what we thought they would look like <laughs> i've seen them i've seen beings with hats on cowboy hats and they come on with accessories and and uh they all come together and uh i didn't at first when i first was uh coming online with this i i told them and i told myself i want to see it all like I want to know if the success and they didn't disappoint. <laughs> they even showing me everything. I think. <laughs> so after you saw all of these orbs, your experiences started increasing. Yes. So, okay. So after I seen these orbs mm -hmm. for that time, um, that was like the first kind of initial time they started coming and experiencing things in the daytime, nighttime. It didn't matter. But that during that, that summer, I they were coming to me every night. Um, in the fields and in, into my property. I was living on a farm and I documented all of this. This was in I, Colorado? I, yes, this is when I was living in Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, I'm currently in Florida now. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, they were coming to me every night. I'm talking about like coming across the... They, so what they can do is, which is really fascinating, is uh, they can hop into lights and because they're energy self, and they can astral project those lights anywhere they want. So they can, if you see a light, a street light, a mile, two miles away, they can hop into that light and make that light look like it's moving um, across the field or like right in front of you. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> they did that a few times uh, with the lights that are miles away out in this uh, prairie land in Colorado. And uh, we were like the only house on the, on the street for miles, a farm, and there's no lights out there. So the fact that they were able to do that was, was magical. And then... Um, then from what they show you during the daytime, which they showed me that they also have control over a lot of things we deem natural, like the sun is a conscious being. Uh, the earth is a conscious being, as we know, and they can take the sunlight and they can take certain clouds and kind of redirect the sunlight. So it, it shoots into like a beam, like, like one of those like light beams with purples in it and the beautiful colors. And you'll see it like a streak in your pictures, but that's literally them. And they can use that to kind of project yourself or shoot light codes, or sometimes you'll see orbs from that. And uh, they showed me that one day. And that was probably one of the greatest days of my life because I saw this Palladian, three Palladian beings when they did that. And 
Wow. <laughs> I've never seen that in my life. That's um, amazing. So they're like using uh, the clouds to almost communicate with light to you. Yes. To us. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, wow. Absolutely. And it can and talk to us through numbers, um, using numbers, um, different things, downloads with us. They can talk through people. They can get people different downloads. If you match their frequency, then their downloads unlock and you can be able to do certain things or get remembrances and synchronicities from that. And it's wild. Um, and then when I started, when I really came into it, I was taking pictures of tons of clouds. I think my cloud drive has, my drive has so many cloud pictures. Google's probably like, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> All these cloud pictures. But when I discovered mirroring, that's where it took it to another level of my seeing thing. And that's when you can start seeing faces and the different beings. And then you can start interacting with them and um, asking them to do stuff. Like I would ask them, Hey, can you guys uh, smile and give them peace sign in the next picture I take or the next set? And they'll do that. They did that. They were like, smile and give me the peace sign or they would respond to me. Uh, and then sometimes I wouldn't even know I'll ask a question of something for them to do something, not knowing that they already knew I was going to ask that question. And I already had the answer to what I asked in one of my photos. I just haven't got to it yet. Wow. That is so <laughs> cool. This is, I was thinking about you the other day because there were some cloud formations. Like they were next level. It just didn't look, it was literally a beam as the sun was setting. There was like a straight shot of a cloud beam, like going straight up. It was oh. just the most interesting thing. It was like one sun ray. Interesting. Huge. Yeah, it was really interesting. I'll send you a picture. But I heard you, and correct me if I'm wrong, did you say that there's 80 new cloud formations? So, so they, updated, they, they updated to like 30 new cloud types within the last three years to the cloud, the, the cloud registry um, since this started, since when, since when C-19 started. 2020, um, they updated the cloud registry with 30 new cloud types. Yes. And they didn't have an explanation of why they did this. They just randomly happened. Now, I believe that they did this because they knew these beings were here and they didn't want people to freak out. So they get, you know, the quickest thing they can do is put a scientific term to it and tell people, hey, these are new clouds. You know, nobody has seen these clouds ever before, these kind of cloud types ever. And then all of a sudden they just randomly show up. That's kind of kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. And they're definitely look, some of them look like angels, fairies, dragons. Um, and the perspective is when these beings show up, um, you're seeing everybody is not wrong on what they're seeing because it, it's literally a bunch of different beings stacked on top of each other in different directions. And um, so one person from one angle could be seeing a dragon or a dog and another person across the street could be seeing an angel or a fox. And um, that's how they come in stacked on top of each other and different directions. So when you mirror it and you flip the pictures or invert them, you start seeing the individual beings in your pictures. And what, what verifies it uh, is the fact that you'll have a picture that you'll mirror and you'll see like 10 beings in there and uh, you can flip it upside down and you'll get, a different set of beings with the same dimensions. The dimensions don't change. Same dimensions, different beings. That's the multidimensional aspect. And uh, I'll show you. Uh, wow. Yeah. Can we look at some of your images? Yeah. This is fascinating. <laughs> I love it. Because now I'm looking at the condensation in the air as like a layer of language. It's you're helping me just to see things very differently right now. Okay. All right. So, so this is my uh, Telegram page. It's a little easier to kind of see now. A lot, my, a lot of the pictures we take are trying to show people what to look for. Like mm -hmm. in these, uh, these kind of pictures, you can see I enha you enhance them. The reason we enhance our pictures and contrast and stuff is because um, these beings, they, are, they exist in an invisible light spectrum that we can't see with our naked eye i think the human eye can only see two percent of all the known light spectrums in the universe so that's a lot <laughs> of light spectrum that we can't see yeah. so our so we're using our technology to contrast saturation we can adjust and be able to see them and uh going into this here here i'll show you one of these here so this is a picture i took the other day 
And uh, you can kind of see here, there's an eyeball right there in the middle of the screen. It's got all, you know how it's all different types of clouds in here. You got mm -hmm. different shapes and, and letters and, and you can kind of see the face in there. Now, when you mirror the photos, you don't, a lot of people don't have to mirror because um, depending on where they're at spiritually and, and, um, and because everybody's on their own different levels, but we're coming mm -hmm. to the same path. They can then, uh, some people can see the faces in this right now and see, uh, see beings in this right now. And um, when, when you mirror it, all we're doing is we're verifying what we're seeing is there. And when we do that, they'll meet us halfway and show us more because we're using our technology and setting the intent to see them. So here's the picture and here's it mirrored wow. um, inside. And now you can see there's a whole being here. There's a couple of beings. There's a feline at the top here. Let me see if I can pull this out. Right here. There's one here. One here. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it gets even more crazier once you start to. They're uh, so clear when you mirror them. I mean, I was yeah. definitely seeing things on the first image, but it's. It's striking. Mm -hmm. It's striking. Here's another one. Wow. It looks like she's wearing a crown, the being that's uh, in the middle. But the, actually, her crown is another being. So, like, that's what I realized with these metaterrestrials is they are working all together to protect themselves as an image. There's no being that's above or below them. They're all neutral. They're all balanced. And they all need each other to kind of project this image because if one being is missing, then the whole image doesn't doesn't go right, doesn't look right. So they kind of have to work with each other here. Um, what a beautiful way of thinking about that, Dab. I love that. That's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, okay. let me show you something here. I have a bunch of them that I just took recently. Here, let's go back to here. Um, and uh, you're in for a treat here because I just took these. So I, I just found this out the other night. Um, and I take a lot of pictures, as you can see. Wow. Um, okay. So this was a night shot <laughs> I took with my phone with no clouds. Okay. So there's no clouds in this. You can see the stars um, all in here. And um, you can kind of see them in here already. You can see the colors, the purples, the greens. And I did bring it. The contrast out a little bit so you can see the greens and purples but and um you can kind of see them in here and then i mirrored this and you can kind of see them in here um in the sky so they're above us regularly um doing certain things here you go wow that is so pretty it almost looks like Oh, well, I'm sure this is relative, but I see a lot in there. Yeah, yeah, there's multiple beings in this. Yeah. Um, and then, wow. I mean, not, not including the bigger being that you see, but there's like a lot going on in this <laughs> and on the sides and, and they all kind of come together to kind of create this image to to formulate. And this is about, this is about any clouds. This is just etherically in the sky. Um, and what I believe is what they're doing is they are um they're around us all the time mm -hmm. and the some of their ships can project their face on the side of it so we're just seeing um we're seeing a projection of them in in the earth grid <coughs> in the grid that's above us um and it's amazing it's amazing that they that they can do this um it's so beautiful it's so oh, beautiful yeah. wow frog type beings yeah. um there's all types of and I, I i haven't seen and since i've been doing this for the last i say three four years and i haven't they have they've showed me so many different beings that i haven't yet seen um a different i've seen the same some similar ones but mainly different like different beings each time um so they're showing me that there's so many of them here right now which is uh very remarkable that that one this one i or the first one that you showed of the night sky mirrored that's what i was thinking they look like amphibious like almost reptilian but like newt and you said frog yeah the, these night sky remind me of wow that's cool this one's a, a star 
that I took. Um, so I, I, some, and another thing that happens is I can also, they can talk to us through the stars, which aren't necessarily stars. I believe, I believe it's them and their Merkabas or light ships, but they can talk to us with these stars and, um, the stars actually, the stars actually come up, um, they phase out and they move around a lot and we don't really see them moving a lot. We just see them in place because they can kind of lock in. And um, a lot of the times they can come out of place and they come down and talk to me um, like tree level. These, th these things, they project themselves right in front of me and it, you can ask them yes or no questions. And it goes up and down for yes and side to side for no. But this star specifically phased out and I took a picture of it, then mirrored the, fa the, the phased out picture. And then I ended up finding this in one of the, one of the combinations when you mirror it. Do you know and what star a, it is? <clears throat> I think it might be serious. Wow. Um, because I, I, and the weird part about that is in my chart, I have a conjunct in Canis Major. Um, and I also noticed that everywhere I go, I also have a couple conjuncts in Lyra. I keep seeing um, Lyra, Lyra and Orion around me the most. Vega and Orion is always around me. Like uh, we're, we're, wherever I go in the country, um, and I'm here in Florida now, and Orion shows up right next to me, and Vega is is right there. <laughs> wow. So and serious. <laughs> so all the the places I've incarnated at are literally close to me all the time. It's so weird. This is just beautiful. <clears throat> the color. I love that you're mirroring the stars. Like wow. That yeah. I can yeah. imagine that if you were to continue to. I would just think that that's like almost a new modality to explore what you're doing or a yes. new subject, I guess. It would yeah, it still change the paradigm once people realize that this exists because um, once they realize that these beings exist, mm -hmm. it changes our whole reality of what we know. Uh, it rewrites the physics, the history books, everything. But I feel like that that's what I was coming to. I was blocked from sharing this information um, energetically and physically. Um, I believe by them at, at one point and by the government, um, because when I first came online, I wanted to share this to the world um, that they existed. And um, um, I couldn't share it to the world that they existed because I wasn't sure. Well, first of all, they didn't want me sharing the information yet because I wasn't ready, because I didn't totally understand what I was seeing. And it's very important to get it right. Yeah. what we're seeing because this could terrify a lot of people and take people in the wrong direction mm -hmm. um or or do other things and harm if not done properly um so that was one thing they wanted me to, to totally all put the brakes on learn as much as i can soak up information uh, uh receive the downloads i'm receiving and then go about it so it took me like a two years for me to be able to come online and sh start talking about it and then I started having all these other um, issues with my health that had to get changed. Um, and now I'm okay. better now. Are you but, okay now? Yeah, yeah, I'm better now. Okay. That was weird. It was like a purging, I guess, of everything that I, when I was going through this, that I was doing at the time, I had to literally change my whole outlook and it changed my life. It changed everything, how I viewed life, experiencing them. Um, it, it it changed even how I was living because I was, I, I really wasn't, wasn't happy before I met them uh, with it, myself, it like, my life. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. Mm, you're good. No, you're good. Go ahead. It feels like you as, have assimilated these, this information, you know, like you've grounded it and it yes. gives you strength. Like you're embodying these images, you are, I can feel it when you came on looking at you, when you were talking, it's like, you're not just talking about these beings, like you are talking these beings, if that makes sense. That's yeah. how I feel you from here. It changed my life. Interacting with them, they changed my life, getting me closer to source. Um, God, like it, it, they helped me get closer to source and um, find the answers I need. I also had to deal with my shadow self. Um, just learn how to balance my shadow side. We can't totally get rid of it, but but because we, we need it, we need our shadow self. We need both halves of ourselves to complete a whole. And um, um, 
I was uh, at that time I went homeless and had health problems. <laughs> so I was in and out the hospital and on the streets and they were following me around still. And I was taking pictures of them. And uh, I was getting some pretty incredible photos then. And uh, these are, these are feline beings here. This one I took when I was leaving the conference um, in Florida and Georgia, I have said had crossed the Florida Georgia line and went to Atlanta to see a friend. And this being came out um, when I was there at my friend's house <clears throat> and uh, in Georgia there. And then That's following cool. a couple of weeks later, this feline being came out um, also in the clouds. Gosh. And uh, you can see the funny. and the crazy part is you can flip this upside down. and It's a completely different being with the same dimension. And there's a little guy at the top of the screen here. Um, yeah. He's like, uh, oh, here's another feline. Wow. Um, female. And that, that was coming out of this one. So realistic. Yeah. Wow. I got the picture where the sun, the original picture, where it's like, because I had a wide angle lens and this, the sun, this thing was coming out of the sun. So, and you can see half of her face in the original picture. <laughs> and um, so when I mirrored it, I, I was like, wow, you can see her whole face. And there's another being in the top too. Um, that's like, the top part of her head there's another being there it looks like an elder um looks like a another being a younger being and then an elder type being on top of her mm -hmm. but you can Boy, definitely tell that incredible i mean it's just thank incredible you. thank you and it's so they, uh, realistic what is so incredible is that it's not just like you can see the shadowing the depth the yeah, it, it's just so realistic. And then her mouth is another being. Wow. <laughs> so it goes into multidimensional aspects mm -hmm. of this. Um, so when we go to, um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. So here's a picture I took. Uh, I don't know if this is the one I wanted. No, it's not the one. It's going to be this one it's up here. It's up here. Okay. So here it is. Uh, here's the picture of um, of something I took the other day, and this is one of how you can kind of see them. You can kind of see like how the clouds look stringy, and they are springing. They're, you can kind of see a face right here, um, mm -hmm. kind of from the side, yeah, uh, going on, and they, they kind of show up themselves in here. So when we when you mirror it, okay, um, going into this one. So this is the one I mirrored, um, and this one looks like a fish at the top. And there's a couple other beings, but there's a bunch of beings going on, doing stuff in this thing. And uh, mirroring it, <clears throat> you can kind of see, now you see them in that section. And this is where I kind of feel like the Native Americans got their their totem poles from seeing these beings. And that's why they made the totem poles. Because totem poles, they, they have like different animals stacked on each other. Mm -hmm. And that kind of reminds me of them. They look like different animals stacked on each other. And um, I can totally you can see really that. see them. And they have human looking ones, which I'm going to show you. Uh, they have a humanoid looking one that was really blew my mind. And he's really cool looking. God, these are, there's so much. Like I can see multiple. I can see so many in here. <clears throat> yeah. This one looks like he's got a hat on and the hat is a cat, a feline being. Mm -hmm. And then he, and his hat. And then, he, then you see the, the one being there with his, High cheekbones, <clears throat> his nose is another being. Uh, in the brim of his hat, the cat's mouth is another being. <laughs> so you can see the cat being, which is the hat, the hat of the, the cat in the hat, which is kind of funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cat in the hat, and then the, the mouth of the cat is a being, and then his nose is a being, and then you got the overall face of the human type being. Well. Are you, do you um do you sell these dad what you say do you sell these or are you just sharing them or not just but do you uh, share i just share them i i was thinking about selling them um maybe as art pieces because mm -hmm. everyone's different and uh they're one to one they're never gonna find a um you're, you're not gonna have a, i believe that everybody's gonna have a different experience mirroring you're not gonna have similar similar beings because of your higher self connecting to your guides so they're, they're all going to be slightly different um so I, I would definitely sell these 
um, with an affirmation attached to it to help whoever does buy these because that's these a are idea. Um, and that's something that I was thinking about doing um, um, maybe as like an NFT or something. Um, but I, I just haven't had the, there are just so many, I have so many that um, it would be, it would be, <laughs> it's endless. There's so many of them. I, as you can see on the screen, 51,596. That's just what I have on my um, mm -hmm. telegram. That's not even including what I have saved on my cloud drives. So and people, each, we can, is it, can anybody join your telegram? Mm -hmm. Yes. And okay. anybody can, uh, and I teach people how to mirror so you can look at beings yourself and do this. Okay, cool. Okay. There's so many of them um, that they're all around us. They're in the trees. Um, they're in, they're in water. They're on anything natural. Uh, that the sun can project on they're in and it's pretty fascinating uh, you, once you uh, get... have you heard of cassie claire cassie claire i'll send you there's a woman named cassie claire and she takes images as well through crystals i don't oh, know yeah. her method or her process uh interesting it looks it's similar but different mm -hmm. Um, but you saying that they're in crystals as well reminded me of that. Yeah, they're in crystals too. I, I have to mirror my crystals and they're in there. I also mirrored my pillowcases, my arm. Um, they're in that. I have a I have a video where I mirrored my crystals, my pink tourmaline, and it looks like a snake and a bunch of other beings are in there. You can see them um, clearly in those. And then uh, let's see here. Is a bunch of them here. I just did. Um, wow. you got a few in here. Looking down. <laughs> mm. Gosh. <clears throat> Have you oh ever had an experience that was unpleasant with any of these? Um. So when I first came online with this. Um, no, I, I can say no, I haven't had an unpleasant experience, but they did show me some stuff that existed. So one day when I first came online, and I think this is back when the, because I believe that there, there was a point where when I did wake up, there were still archons and lower astral beings that were still roaming around the planet. And, uh, and they were still in the skies too, because those archons were also in our skies doing things. And um, they showed me that they still existed. And there was this cloud that turned into a big gray alien. Like it, you can see him in everything. He was just, like sitting there watching me and it freaked me out. And it was like a dark gray, uh, dark gray cloud. It was like a real nasty looking cloud, um, like a storm that looked like it was coming. And the front of the, cl the cloud had this huge gray alien face and it freaked me out. And then uh, they showed me that they can kind of get take it away and make it go somewhere. Um, this is also them. They're also everywhere. So you can see, there's another picture one of my admins took. Um, and you can kind of see them all up in the top there. You can see an eyeball right here, um, kind of manifesting in there. And uh, this is another picture of them. Um, they're all over the place showing us. Here's another picture of them. Um, this is what they look like without the mirroring. So if you mirrored it, you'd see faces and different beings in this. Um, and I can well. see how they're just such unique clouds. It's like not a cumulus. It's not a serious. It's like no, <laughs> they're very unique. And they had to re. They had to some of these. And some of these look like um the, the one of the new cloud types. They try to name these um like that. These redonic clouds and and a lot of them I think are ships and also them. Um, that's just how they appear to us in this density, but um they don't look like normal um they don't look normal like here here's the end of a cloud here people would just you know write that off mm -hmm. as it being a cloud but you can see many faces in this mm -hmm. already and then when we mirror this you can see them in there wow. let's see let's get to another one here this little guy um there's another oh, one at the almost, top. that almost looks like a little elephant down there yeah, it does. Little <laughs> elephant guy. 
Um, here's another one. He's in the dark part. Wow. And and they're in the trees too. Oh yeah. Whoa. They're in the trees here. Hold on a second. Sorry, I got a friend bird calling me. Let me call you right back. Can I call you right back? Take right back. Okay, sorry, you there? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh no, you're good. <laughs> so it's, yeah, they're all yeah, sometimes it looks like the the whole body, like and by that I mean like their spines, their their bodies. Whoa, that one's beautiful. Yeah, they um they come in very much like this. Um, this is my friend's um camera footage from her house, and I was able to screenshot this on Telegram. We were in a live and I enhanced it a little bit and I mirrored this to see on her wall, and you can see there's a being on her wall. Um, and she was getting a lot of orb activity in her garage and a lot of orb activity um in her house so there's beings her guides are in her house in her garage and you can see them right here is literally a plasma energetic being um floating there um and he's made of energy wow mm. kind of looks like a lion wearing a helmet mm -hmm. <laughs> some of them look like a yeah they're pretty remarkable they really oh. are so, gets into a whole other world once we start bringing down that paradigm with this. Let me see here. Is there one more machine? Uh, I don't know if I'll load here. Yeah, like some of them look like this. That is, is that in Florida? Yes, this is in Florida. That looks like that thunderstorm sky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, straight up. And that's what they, I think they come into on it's the thunderstorms and uh they like to come in on uh when it's uh well they come in in all storms, but I believe the thunderstorms is especially when they can be come into um because they they show up a lot in those storms as, as like the the guy the, the the cornerstone coming in. And um this is a friend of mine sent me this photo from outside of her house. And of course, I mirrored this, and you can see this being here. Wow. And uh, the colors are just the what colors, gives me yeah. purples and and uh, high density colors, like like you're talking about twelve, like the 12, 13, 14th density, um, the emerald, em uh, indigo flame colors. They're coming in, and um, golden flame, <laughs> like they're coming in on these colors, man. Color spectrums are yeah, wild. Gorgeous. Yeah, it really, um, I loved your explanation of them using the clouds to bend light for us to make themselves present. Is that yes. how you were interpreting? Or that's how yeah. I understood yeah. that. Yes. So <laughs> they, um, if you look at it, light is how they travel because they are light. Mm -hmm. So they can literally manipulate things when they get near it, especially the orbs and the light ships, the Merkabas, when they get near stuff, um, since our whole world is like a, it's like a plug and play conscious entity for them. They can bend light and manifest and project themselves around anything. So they, if they wanted to go, if they're like, if you see them like an orb by your tree, they can literally bend the reality around the tree and make the tree into a face, the, the foliage of the tree um can turn into a face just by their presence being there or sometimes even by the wind so when you take a picture synchronistically and the wind's blowing and you um then mirror that photo the, the chances of the wind um being in those branches being in the exact location to form a face is like one in a million or something like that and uh, that just tells you that they're there and um they can literally bend light to their will and they do it all the time <laughs> Um, do you think, has there been an increase in what you have been seeing with these 
yes. with the Schumann residents or the solar storms that we're getting, are they affecting at all your ability to see? Um, well, the Schumann residence has been, yes, it has been um, messing with my, with my strength and energy. <laughs> Not with my ability to see, though. I've been seeing them even stronger now, mm -hmm. but with my energy, mm -hmm. like the last few days since that X flare hit, my uh, energy has been up and down. Like some days I'll be highly energized, and then other days I can't even get out of bed. I'll sleep I'll almost sleep all day. <laughs> oh, same. I feel. Um, I was just talking about this. <clears throat> What do you think about, um, I feel like when that happens, and this kind of leads into a question I was going to ask you anyway, because you mentioned you needed to do shadow work before you were, uh, had being able to see them more or a mm -hmm. deeper understanding of your relationship with them. Um, I think that it feels as though sometimes these solar flares, as they're activating us, I think that they're also activating that which needs to be healed or transcended in order to be mm -hmm. living within this activation and fully assimilate that, those light codes, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've noticed that as that happens, each time that we like move through that or we're affected by those gamma rays that again, it's our, our shadowy things, the things that we need to focus on and that we need to heal is coming up also. And I feel like that causes anxiety that causes, uh, we're, I think that as we're expanding, um, and ascending and transcending that we're, uh, interpreting those, what needs to be healed differently. And so Absolutely. it, it's reading like I have anxiety or I it's reading different for me and it's easier. It's definitely easier, but every time mm -hmm. there seems to be a little bit of an upgrade, there's a little something I need to deal with. <laughs> Absolutely. If you will. Yeah. It seems like we get to the next challenge as soon as uh, we go through one of those CMEs. And I believe it's like every CME we get, it's like strategically placed and conscious because it's like, you know, it's, it's another milestone. Um, of evolution for us and ascension and then we are getting these upgrades and we have to kind of shed another part of our old self another part of our old self i gotta let go of something else and yeah. and be able to accept something else and we're, we're going to constantly be doing that because um everything that we once knew in our reality um wasn't our real reality so we we hold on to things that we are comfortable with a lot of us and a lot of us hold on to things that we don't understand so we don't want to change and those things don't serve us anymore so we have to we have to get uncomfortable to get comfortable again and um that's all a part of it all these upgrades of us having it like not only the physical symptoms of ascension where you're achy and tired and flu-like symptoms and but like going through the motions and and uh balancing yourself um learning how to deal with the things that 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 you need to work on being a better person, letting go of the things that you can't change. Um, because um, we have to, part of the living in higher density consciousness is um, being in the now, not the past or the present, I mean, or the future, but the present, uh, what you can do now in this moment. Um, and that's part of it because you can't go back in time and change things and you can't go into the future and see what's going to things, but you can direct your future to where you want to go and manifest the things that you want um, now. Um, and that's what it's all about. If you live in the now, then you're already living in a higher density consciousness. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the best part. And I, I had to learn that the hard way. <laughs> I had to learn the hard way first because I, I didn't understand that that concept but then uh i finally got it i was like oh okay so you can't you have to let go of things you can't hold things on you can't take everything with you but but then again like you know you're supposed to take in what you can and um they're constantly talking to us and 
wanting us to 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 do this and i feel like the people that see this the people that experience these things are our soul family members and um soul cluster members that are all coming online all at once and seeing this because i'm finding out people that have visited uh the galactic centers and um and uh or have incarnated there all have like a one up on people as far as uh angelic abilities and, and psychic abilities because they have this kind of incarnation closer to god kind of deal where they have these abilities and these their guides are kind of pushing them but then mm-hmm. it's a really it's like a direct correlation to that but then also um how people are are, are able to see because like I was wondering like how many people are activated like I was when I got when I was activated and I'm I was shocked to find out there's a lot but it's just that nobody knew how to interpret what they were seeing um nobody was coming out and sharing these things but then you had a bunch of people just taking pictures of the sky and then a whole lot of people who are just seeing them as clouds they're not seeing the individual faces and in the colors different beings only the individual was <clears throat> that was taking the photo um and that's because they were meant to be in that position to do it because they were born to do it and uh, kind of get the collective up to speed to where we're supposed to be. Cause we were all supposed to be doing this from the get go. Um, but they kind of took that away from us, the powers that be and uh, the elites and all that <clears throat> by uh, bioengineering and, and all these other systems to keep our, our consciousness down and our abilities down that we, that we've always had. I love that you brought up the galactic center as well. And that um, people with incarnations or conjunct alignments to those galactic centers have a, um, are more likely to be interdimensional travelers, be Mm -hmm. able to uh, transcend, receive those light codes. I also too, have you noticed, and do you think that I think that the galactic center and then the super galactic and then the Nyakea and Shaki, I mm-hmm. look at those as being um, almost a chakra system for mm-hmm. the divine and that mm-hmm. each of those are holding records. Each of those are a point of Akash. Ah, interesting. Mm-hmm. Anyway, if you, if you visited there or if you uh, incarnated there, mm-hmm. it's like a um i guess it's like a memory blueprint of something that's imprinted within you yes. your soul imprint for you to be able to kind of initiate now which makes sense mm-hmm. uh, um they, makes a lot of sense the weird uh in with julia balaz talks about like those would be the blueprinters also likely the blueprinter souls likely have those uh galactic powerpoints or cosmic powerpoints in their charts Yes. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And those are the people that are waking up humanity right now. Mm-hmm. Like um, there are a lot of them are on social media um, like yourself, like they're out here ringing the alarm, trying to get people to wake up and see what's in front of us, uh, question our reality. Um, they're getting these downloads of information from these higher beings. <laughs> and they are um, they are the, the, the spiritual leaders of our of our time right now a lot of them don't even know it though they don't even know um that they that they are this is a being in the tree here wow um, so you can see a little orb right there on the left there's an orb that came down sometimes they come down to me tree level and uh and um then i caught them i caught the orb when i took the picture and you can see when i mirrored it they were directly interacting with the tree so this is the tree you're seeing um, being manipulated by that orb in the left there, a uh, light orb. Um, that is manipulating. incredible. Yeah. And there's another one. Kind of looks kind of a reptilian-ish. Mm-hmm. I do have Draco guides, which I found out. I do have some reptilian Draco guides. There are some good Dracos that's there out there. Are. Yeah, there really are. It's, um, I kind of look at it, not to throw the ism out there, but it's like speciesism, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's how I interpret that when people are like, uh, reptilians, bad. Yeah. And then I don't that's know what people, about that. Right. Well, they, and that's what they, well, I mean, the ones that's here are, I would say, bad because they, 
they I mean they didn't they were trying to kill us. They don't mm-hmm. want us to be here. But there they are there are Dracos that have ascended past this past having a physical body that are um great beings and a lot of them are warriors, warrior race type beings, especially if the if you have if you're a Draco Starseed and you have a conjunct Methuban, um you're like a warrior type of uh person. You like to fight for the underdog, you fight for injustice and um uh, Draco Starseeds are like warriors. They like to fight. Their they power. Fight. And another thing I noticed that since we're on the subject of Draco Starseeds, I noticed mm-hmm. too that one of the biggest lessons that they are having to move through and tackle, and it may be a little rough, is that mm-hmm. there's a um they need to come to that love for self versus because they often come across as being narcissistic, right? Because they're bringing yes. these, like energies in and it's like Mimi it but it's just like kind of that's the nature but Mm -hmm. it's me they need to like fall in love with themselves because I believe that they're probably coming in they're probably one of the just such a persecuted species if we will going back to that like (laughs) ism on the speciesism Mm -hmm. um exactly I think they're carrying a lot of shame and guilt in their for the the collection if that's such a thing yes you know yes, but it is. something it's a karmic, like that the karmic link to them you know because mm-hmm. of, the, of the others that were doing certain things so they're coming in with this oil on their shoulder and they do have yeah. an egotistic narcissistic type of personality but it's um that's something that they have to learn how to balance yeah. Yeah. and how to handle it. Um, and how beautiful and, and how amazing when they do because like that's what we need right now I feel like we need to feel protected and how amazing just to have that. Yes. There's so many, there's so many down here. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, if it is over 200 million, or I think it's more than that star seeds on the planet. I think it's a lot more. Oh, yeah. 200 million. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel oh. like there's probably more and, or I don't know. I feel like sometimes we're all star seeds, but some of us are coming in closer to the knowing of that. Yes. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. I feel like we're all star seeds because yeah. every person chart I've seen, um, they all have a, a conjunct in some kind of um, place. Mm-hmm. And I'm, what I'm finding out also, which is also interesting, is that um, there's a lot of information talking about the. 178 different realms under the great dome and there's like lands beyond the wall which uh, apparently there's like lands that are named after different star systems they all have continents and their own suns and like we can actually go there um like can you um, elaborate because i don't know what you're talking about okay so there's this book um it's called by nasco funded and there's a couple books called lands beyond the ice wall mm-hmm. um and the terra infinita and in the Terra Infinita, it talks about um, this this guy, a scientist, who was like Admiral Byrd, kind of like an Admiral Byrd person. He actually goes across the ice wall several times and voyages over there and goes to these celestial lands and meets these extraterrestrial um, races that are outside of our ice wall that gave him a map and um, all these different things of what's beyond there. And what he found out was that our universe um, kind of looks like um, like if you if you can picture a wiffle ball with a bunch of holes in it, mm-hmm. each hole in that wiffle ball is a different realm, a different realm. Each realm, you could say like one realm for us is the known lands, and that's like our our Earth that we know. And then out and then outside of that, our our realm has three other parts to it. It's bigger than what they told us that has more continents that are bigger than the ones we know. And apparently there's a continent of, uh, of the, the giants and there's a continent here of uh, the, the celestial lands and um, Asgard exists. And there's continents with different beings, humans that live on there. And then outside of that, our realm, once you go outside of that, those three rings, it, it, then there's 178 other realms like ours that all I think have corresponding names, like star names. Like there's a land of Arcturus, there's a land of Orion, there's a land of Venus, there's a land of Jupiter, there's a land of Mars, there's a land of the Anunnaki, Nibiru. Um, 
and they all have uh, corresponding different lands, continents, oceans, um, their own suns, and um, we can technically go to them. It's from what, what this information says in this book, um, like a portal. Hmm. Wow, and, I've uh, never heard that. I'm going to have to look for that. That sounds so cool. Yeah, it's very and interesting. And it makes me wonder if like our souls um, that were incarnated at these places you know, from our remembrance, where we really like, could we really have been incarnated in these realms and been caught in these soul matrix and they just been spitting us back out um, to this inner realm here. But really we were actually going to the Akashic records and then going into these different realms that's in our uh, quote unquote universe. Um, because that it, it makes me question that. And I always wondered that. Um, and I had a download about that because I was I was pointed into the right direction with information on this. And that's how, part of the intuitional thing, which is very weird because um, I noticed that people that have, and I'm going back to the astrology with this, <laughs> people go. that have 25 <laughs> degrees in their Jupiter, um, they tend to find information on their consciousness. It tends to find them. And I always end up being lucky because Jupiter is the planet of luck. And I always won't find information that just makes sense. And it's like, it finds me. So this information found me. I read the book. I looked at all the maps. And I was like, man, that, that kind of made sense of uh, all of our realms. And then like our the soul trap that they had us in. So when we were incarnating, we probably remembered being in these places with beaches and beautiful sky, skylights and all this. Because they're real realms. They're real places. And, they're, and, and on the map in this book, it shows the, ge the geographics of all these places. Um so they do exist. And um, they just marked it as fiction to kind of throw people off. But I don't know. Hmm. Um, begs the question. Yeah, well, especially when they're using like all of those actual known star systems or places or yes. planets. <laughs> yes, so, exactly. It's really exactly. hard not to like make it tangible. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's where that's where I'm talking about making it tangible, make it make sense. Yeah, and <laughs> that's the crazy part. Wow, that's interesting. Oh man, yeah, Ooh. I want to see more, but <laughs> I uh, this is just yay! There you are. Um, that's just incredible. This all all of your work is just incredible. It's I'm. Oh. You know what? I want to say that I'm proud of you. I I don't know you really, really well, but I I just I was just telling Erica, like, I really, really appreciate you because I've just seen you be real consistent in what you're doing. And it's it's nice to see and look, you've grown this huge body of work because I think I remember, didn't you just start that? Like yeah about two years ago i just started well i just started mirroring i was still seeing them way before that i think i started seeing them in 2020 and i was documenting it in 2020 21 but i started mirroring about 2022 a year later and uh mm, yeah summer 2022 <clears throat> i started mirroring and for it's been about a year and a half two years now and now um, I think I saw I remember when you first started that the telegram because I go in and out of telegram it it's <laughs> it it, it, ha, it makes me feel a certain way but yeah. um yeah and now look you have 51,000 images in there yeah and I went from having nobody following me to like now almost 3,000 people uh, really? on telegram and about 22,000 <clears throat> on tiktok shush do you really that's what you were talking about that's awesome dad yeah, that's really cool um i'm happy that people are interested man I, it went from nobody from everybody thinking i was crazy to now everybody's seeing them now yeah. so and i Aww. i love it i love that it uh this it's uh because the intent is for them to the i think we're under the disclosure path where we're all living in different realities because we co-create our realities mm -hmm. and one of the realities is that we're not alone um we have our guides and manifestational beings helping assisting us here and watching us save ourselves save our world and ourselves from ourselves so we are um we are that's going to change our reality and how we go about doing things 
and how we go about learning and, and teaching our kids uh, in the future going forth on everything we do uh, once this gets public. Um, I love that, everything you just said. Uh, I have a question. If you had, let's say you had like a young brother or and they didn't know anything about this, um, what would be the first thing that you would suggest to them or what top, how would you even address their being like off world mm. entities more than just us? Because believe it or not, there are still, there, there are a lot of people out there who are not open to this yet. Mm -hmm. um, I know that and it's crazy. I didn't think that that was possible. I thought, oh, for sure. Everybody knows now. This is what I think. Yeah. But when I move, when I communicate, not quite everybody is knowing. Yeah, it's um, because the programming, um, right. people want to get their information from sources that want to keep you down. I had the one thing I did was I had to unplug the TV. I had to put myself around people that vibrate in my frequency. OK, um, so I literally moved to Florida to be around people like myself. Um, that are patriots, that are spiritualists, they're awake, they're Reiki healers, they're psychics, they're astrologers, they believe in the same things that I do and they support the same things I do. So that way our frequency matches the same. And then we have similar synchronistic experiences because when you're around people who vibe at a low frequency and they're programmed, it's like talking to a brick wall um, and it's hard to get people to move when that's all they know. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you have to first get outside, get, get out your own way, get outside of yourself, look and be open to, to the possibility of the unknown, because there's so much that we just don't know. Um, and that's coming to us now. And then once you do that, you'll start discovering things. Once you unplug from the matrix, it's like the world opens up and you start seeing a new sun, a new day, and your reality changes. And then what happens is when you get stopped getting told the things that aren't true, um, you start to soak in and see things for yourself. You co-create that reality because we are co-creators of our reality. So my reality overlaps with your reality. But if you stop believing in the false reality, you'll start seeing the real reality transfold in front of you. And um, a lot of the younger children, I think, have those experiences when they're younger. But they were always told, you know, that's not true or that's not real or you're just hearing things. And, um, you know, here, believe in Santa Claus, believe in the tooth fairy. Don't believe in this. Like, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just get out, unplug out of, out of that stuff and, and put yourself around people who will support you and speak life into you, not speak death into you. Oh, can you just say that again? Because that was really nice. <laughs> Yeah. That was beautiful. I'm, like, I'm saying, put yourself around people that will speak life into you and not death into you. Because that's what we're life we speak. into you and not mm -hmm. death into yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Because we're, we're we cast spells on each other all the time by speaking and our vibrations, yes. frequency. Yes. So when you say nice things to somebody, you're speaking life into them. You're raising them up. You're raising their frequency up, and that also unlocks different downloads within them. Um, but when we talk to each other, put each other down, or we lie to each other, those things do do other things too, and they do hurt us, um, even if we don't see it. I'm going to end it on that because that was really <laughs> good. That was really beautiful, Dab. Well, thank you. Yeah. Blessings. <clears throat> Blessings to you. Thank you so much. I'm going to. If I could get all of your contact and your telegram, sure. I'll make sure to put it in the description mm -hmm. and all of your contact. Do you, uh, do you want to tell people how to get in touch with you? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm on telegram at dabbrad100, at dabbrad100. I'm also on Instagram at dabbed in 5D. Um, I have email. I'll send you all those links and stuff for that. And um, I also have a TikTok at dabbrad100. Um, guys can send pictures and video anytime of stuff if you're seeing stuff. And I do lives on my Telegram and TikTok, um, almost daily, almost daily. Oh, cool. Okay. So, cool. okay. Thank well, you for having me on the show. I, I, thank I enjoyed you. It. I really Blessings appreciate you. you. It's been an honor. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait. <laughs> Yeah.
I'm going to end the recording.